welcome to this lecture. Actually, if you recall that I started the antenna analysis this course uh, with first introducing some potentials, vector potentials etcetera and then we said that actually if I know the um, current distribution of an antenna at its surface, then I can find the electrical magnetic field. But this is easily said, but we said that uh, instead of solving this problem, we want to intermediately introduce the potential. So, that if we will first find the potential and after that we will solve the things. But what was the advantage? There were some advantage for going to potentials etcetera, but only for very simple antennas we can find the current distribution across the antenna. It is very difficult to find for complicated antennas, modern antennas it is not so easy to find the what is the current distribution along the antennas, because there will be various modes, there will be various types of currents, you know the currents uh, sometimes they are displacement currents, sometimes they are uh, conduction current etcetera. So, it is not so easy, though today you can say that with the help of modern computers, there are numerical methods. So, you can find out, you can now visualize that is a good thing and uh, that is being used, but if you cannot find this current distribution on a, uh, a thing, but then cannot you use the antenna? The answer is yes, you can approximately use the antenna and the results would not vary much provided you take this approach free transmission equation, where you need to know that instead of the exact field of radiated by antenna, you should perform or find out what is the gain of the antenna in various directions where you are interested, particularly in the from the transmitter to the receiver, the direction in where the receiver is receiving a thing uh, power. So, there if you can find the gain, uh, uh, then you can uh, find out how much power it will receive and actually links, communication links are established based on this. Uh, long back even when the antennas were not much understood etcetera based on these equations. So, we will see that the free uh, transmission equation. So, let us see the two antennas. So, this is a transmitting antenna, this is a receiving antenna and so if this one is connected or radiating a power P t, then what is the uh, power density at the receiving antenna? We can easily write that W t is P t G t. Uh, actually, it should be written as an angle, but I am writing that as if I know the value here. So, P t G t by 4 pi r square and if you want this g t means actually p t g t then if there is efficiency total then uh, sorry p t, t d t by 4 pi r square. Now, this antenna has an effective area. So, the receiving antenna has an effective area 
that is rho r d r lambda naught just in the last lecture we have derived this lambda naught square 2 pi. So, how much power it will collect? Power collect will be P r is equal to W t into this. So, I can say W t into A e r. So, that will be P t rho t d t by 4 pi r square into rho r d r lambda naught square 4 pi. Okay. So, we can say that P r is equal to rho t rho r lambda naught square d t d r by 4 pi r whole square. Now, if we introduce the polarization loss factor, then we can write here that A t cap dot t r this thing we have earlier derived or if we break it into the this efficiencies can be broken into mismatch the impedance mismatch into the conductor loss into into the dielectric loss etcetera. So, P r can be written as the rho C d t rho C d r 1 minus gamma t square 1 minus gamma r square lambda naught by 4 pi r square d t d r Okay. So, this is this formula is called Fries transmission equation. So, you see that if you know various parameters actually here only you see the conductor dielectric loss together has been taken it can be also broken into conductor loss and transmission loss, but actually it is generally taken together because it is very difficult to from measurement to find out what is conductor loss and what is dielectric loss. So, the two losses can be put together that is why it is conductor dielectric together. So, these parameters are known we can find what is the oh there is a p t should be coming here. So, actually this equation is p r by p t um, somewhere from here p t has been gone p t d t you see all these are actually should be P r is equal to W t A e r ah, there there was a P t that P t ah, here was a P t, but after that that P t has been lost. So, this is also P r by P t this is also P r by P t. So, this equation is called Fries transmission equation and you see if there are impedance uh, match then this two term will go. Similarly, if there is polarization match this term will go if it is a lossless antenna these two term will go that is why generally we have under ideal condition lambda naught square by 4 pi r whole square 
g t g r this this is we are familiar with but in actual this is the formula this formula is called free transmission formula many times we use this the assumptions here are the transmitter and receiver antennas they are separated by the far field distance the we the uh, we know at the direction of the receiver from the transmitter the gains similarly for the receiving antenna we know the gain uh, to the tra transmitter that direction and we know all other losses then we can find this thing. A similar equation can be derived for radar range equation they are also this type of formulas can be used uh, that only thing there is instead of a receiver there is a target which takes the energy and scatters back. So, that in radar classes you will come across that if we take there. So, there is a new term called radar cross section gets introduced there and by that again what is the back scattered uh, power that comes from this type of simple models you can find. So, knowing the gain you see instead of analyzing the antenna also you can find out what is the power required. So, you can establish communication links etcetera with that for that you not need not do all analysis of the antenna. So, sometimes actually field theory analysis is overkill because it gives all the information, but all that information is not always necessary. So, to a communication engineer this information is enough. So, he need not bother what is the various fields etcetera at various points what is that polarization that if he has all these loss factors he can safely establish the link. So, this is one thing that we wanted to say and another thing we wanted to say is about the noise that you see antenna whenever it is uh, it is always looking towards the free space and so it is a source of noise. Now, how do we characterize that many times we ignore that, but if you want to do suppose radio astronomy or if you want to have a uh, very uh, if you want to you know that uh, suppose you want to see the uh, weather or ocean etcetera if you want to monitor you need to find out ocean temperature by a receiver. So, or you you, uh, you have some uh, some scatterometer some sensors are there who senses various whatever passive radiation coming. So, for that whatever antenna is receiving in the noise that is actually information. So, they need to have another parameter of antenna very important parameter that is called antenna temperature. So, we will discuss this next antenna temperature. All of you have uh, idea of receiver noise or receiver noise temperature or any electronic circuit that has a uh, noise temperature. Now, antenna it is a passive device it does not create its own noise, but it is a receiver of noise because it receives noise because it is an it is opening its door. So, noise also comes apart from signal noise also comes that is why it also should have that how much it can take this antenna temperature. Now, we start that every object which is not at absolute 0 that means, not at minus 273 degree radiates energy we know this fact the amount of energy radiated is usually represented by an equivalent temperature T b. So, we can write that T b and also whenever radiation means that is a variation it is a function that theta phi in various directions it will have various things. 
So, that is equal to a function like this. So, what is this epsilon? epsilon? This is an emissivity function, it is a dimensionless quantity. So, actually it is a model that any object it has an emissivity. So, what is the emissivity of various things that we know and what is T b? T b is called brightness temperature. And what is T m? This is the physical temperature, physical temperature. So, both these temperatures their unit is Kelvin, emissivity is dimensionless and this what is this reflection coefficient? It is the reflection coefficient of the surface for the polarization of the wave, because you know that when the wave comes from any surface there will be a reflection. So, it is that. Now, the emissivity values obviously, they are varying from 0 to 1. So, the maximum value the brightness temperature can achieve is equal to the physical temperature. Now, in our case that means, uh, in microwave region uh, natural emitters of microwave frequency apart from I think the stars etcetera, they are our uh, radio stars they are, uh, but apart from that there are two nearby sources of radiation. One is the ground, ground is a source of this uh, radiation and it is grounds equivalent temperature is around 300 degree Kelvin and also the sky sky is uh, have a temperature and um, this brightness temperature of around 5 degree kel 5 Kelvin when looking towards zenith and about 100 to 150 degree in the horizon. Obviously, in the horizon it is more noisy and in the zenith it does not have any noise actually that is fortunate for radars etcetera that in the zenith. Now, you see the brightness this temperature or this noise emitted by the different sources is intercepted by our antenna and so it appears at the terminals as an antenna temperature. Now, only thing is antenna also has a gain function. So, it will weight the noises coming from various directions by its own gain function. So, that is why antenna noise temperature is not exactly this T b, it will be a weighting of that. So, that is why the antenna noise temperature T a is nothing but the I can say T b theta phi that will be weighted by gain theta phi and then d the solid angle divided by I will have to find out what is the total of this that is the average because this T a is an average. So, you see g theta phi d gamma. So, the source has a T b brightness temperature that I will have to pass through this antenna which is having a gain. So, now I can complete this, this will be 0 to 2 pi, this will be 0 to pi, this will be also 0 to 2 pi, this will be 0 to pi and instead of that I will write sin theta d theta d phi. So, T a is the effective noise temperature of the antenna.
and g theta phi is the power gain pattern. So, now if we assume now let us see the this is clear and this unit will be again the Kelvin. Now, let us see the this is the antenna. So, the source is here T b. Now, that when it comes here this T b gets converted to T a by that formula. Now, after that what happens? Suppose, this is the antenna z thing. Here I have a transmission line. Usually, this there will be a transmission line. That transmission line let us say length of L and that has a temperature let us say T naught. It is a lossy transmission line. So, that will make this change because this T a here then there will be one thing is due to antenna loss this will change. Now, here there will be loss again in the transmission line. So, this temperature T a will be changed here to something called T small a from T capital A to T small a some other temperature and then it will be connected to whom? It will be connected to a receiver that receiver has a its own noise temperature T r. So, I can say that the whole thing ultimately will have a T s which is T r plus T a because you see temperatures are additive because actually these are equivalent power. So, noise power total system noise power will be whatever antenna has brought up to here plus the noise added by the receiver. So, let us with this let us model it that So, antenna is giving how much power can I say k T a delta f. So, from here antenna is giving this is this much power k T a delta f you understand k is Boltzmann constant T a is the antenna temperature here and delta f is the antenna delta f I can say is the noise equivalent bandwidth. Now, if what is the relation between small t a and capital T a? Can I write T a is T a e to the power minus 2 alpha l plus T 0 1 minus e to the power minus 2 alpha l. Why? because this is one thing that um, this this much length with this attenuation constant of the line that has brought here and this is what this is due to the this transmission nine things the this thing has a uh, temperature the physical temperature of this is T 0. So, T a is nothing but this is the noise given by the this physical temperature and this is from the antenna's attenuation antenna's noise attenuation T a and what else I need to say. So, now I need to then modify that ok. So, now what is the power given here to the receiver k T a small t a delta f. So, this has become with the addition of this k 
KTAF and then what is P S K T A plus T S delta F is equal to you can say K I uh, not T S this will be T R because this temperature is T R T R. So, I can say K T S delta F. So, P S is system noise power at receiver terminal T A is antenna noise temperature noise temperature at receiver terminal T R receiver noise temperature at receiver terminal and what is T A? T A is antenna noise temperature at I can say output terminals of antenna or at the free space end of the antenna whatever. So, this is a new useful thing particularly you know that you need to calibrate it actually suppose you will receive black body radiation. So, those antennas suppose an antenna will see how much is coming from the uh, ocean. So, how it will see unless and until it is calibrated that how much it receives originally. So, for that you need to point it to the thing actually generally it is pointed to the uh, zenith because that is 5 degree Kelvin almost 0 degree Kelvin you can say. So, you point it and then find out this values. So, that is the calibration. Then you point to an actual body may be a ground may be a some uh, sky which is at horizon which is having sizable noise and then you find out. So, a calibrated one can easily find out. So, that is called antenna noise temperature. Okay. So, with that we now close the basic antenna parameter. So, we have seen all next we will see some of the very novel wire antennas where you can easily design wire antennas and for many cases it suffices. So, we will see wire antennas in few lectures after that we will go to aperture antennas with uh, some of the very simple aperture antennas and then we will see the general method of analysis of antennas. Okay. Thank you.